just turned up. I was going to record Luis Mosquera but I mean he competes in a couple of days so he's not going to hit anything big and suddenly you see she's the younger heavyweight so he just got to come over. This video is a bit of a throwback to last year's world championships where Weightlifting House really went from being just interviews and products to interviews, products and videos. And I captured some great training sessions from many of the sport's most amazing athletes, not least this one of the Olympic champion and the most charismatic weightlifter in the world, 26 year old Shizi Yong, as well as his teammate and one of the most sensational pillars in the world, now 22 but then 21 year old Lee Dayin. Despite Shi Ziyong having half a decade on Li Dai-in, these two are two of the tightest friends in the Chinese squad. With veterans like Lu Xiaojun having been in the sport at the top level for over a decade and living with his wife and kids, Shi and Li have somewhat gravitated towards each other. This is the same with Tian Tao too, though just not quite to the same extent. Despite the fact that Shi Ziyong was competing just two days after this, he went pretty heavy on the pulls. According to the members of the Chinese team that I've spoken to, this is simply to maintain fitness, or sport specific fitness. That is the ability in this case to produce high levels of force without adding much volume to the tapered programming and contributing to the decay and fatigue. Shi Ziyong is so extroverted and dynamic to watch. Sometimes when he grabs the bar, he looks like his energy is just waiting to burst out and he's doing everything he can to contain it. Occasionally, bits spill out and he, he yells or he twitches. In fact, Shi's signature yell of Wo Chao has become a bit of a meme in recent months, in part due to some awesome work from people like the Squat Jerk journalist on Instagram, and of course, I believe that we have played our part over at Weightlifting House, not least with our Shi Ziyong approved Wo Chao t shirt that we stock. I'll put a link to that in the description. Unlike Shi, Li Dayin doesn't compete for three more days, but even so, both athletes train similarly to the peaking strategy of Lu Xiaojun, maintaining strength and not needing to focus on the technique of a heavy snatch or clean and jerk. Also, I thought that I would say, and not that comments are bad for the YouTube algorithm, but to prevent a barrage of comments asking what the marks on Shi Ziyong's back are, they are from a type of physical therapy called cupping. If you want to learn more about the science, or lack thereof, with regards to cupping, as well as all other physio practices, then you can check out our interview on the Weightlifting House podcast with Derek Miles. I'll put a link to that in the description, along with a link to more footage and training from Li Dayin and Shi Ziyong, all exclusive to the Weightlifting House Patreon page.
Lee Dayan has now competed at two world championships, but has ended up placing behind Lu Zhangzhen on both occasions. Despite losing to Lu at the two most important competitions of the last 18 months, Li Dayan still has the most Roby points. In fact, he has the third most Roby points of all men behind Lasher and Shi Ziyong. He has this excess of points not solely due to his incredible consistency, though it is rather impressive, but it's as much due to the inconsistency of the 14 year older Lu Zhaozhen. At 35 years of age, Lu just cannot sustain the 170 kilo snatches and 200 kilo clean and jerks across all competitions like Li Dayin can. And as a result, Li Dayin will be the athlete from the men's 81 kilo category from China who will be offered the spot at the Olympics by the IWF, despite Lu Zhaozhen showing that when it really counts at the World Championships, he is still unbeatable. Really, it's just his age that lowers his average roby points. Well, we thought that it would be Li Dayin who'd be going to the Olympics. But after scouring through the IWF documentation on the exact policies on how they'll offer out spots to the Olympics to countries, we found a document that says that the Chinese can decline an offer and that the offer will then be given to the next eligible 81. In the case of Li and Lu, that would mean taking it from Li and giving it to Lu. It probably will come down to internal politics to some extent. The rule is that there can be just one lifter per country per category. However, if a place is offered and declined, then the reallocation process allows for another lifter from the same country to be reinserted into the ranking list at that point and be offered a place in the second round of allocation. It's all buried away in an explanatory document, not even in the main process doc. Filming, I, I didn't have time to get it on my phone. It happens so quick. 